if x1 is minus 1 and xm is xm plus 1 plus m plus 1 for every positive integer m then x100 is how much? Now this is a question that combines um, recursive function and once you work on this recursive function you will see a very common um, sum that you encounter in number theory uh, a summation that you encounter in number theory uh, which you will get by using some good old-fashioned um, pattern recognition or induction so we'll see how that goes x1 the initial value is given to us it's a minus 1 to find x2 you know what give me a second I'm gonna write the formula again but I'll put xm plus 1 as the subject I'm putting this as the subject so xm plus 1 is xm minus m plus 1 so how do you find x2 you want this to be 2 which means you want m to be 1 so x2 is uh, x1 minus 1 plus 1 which is minus 1 minus 2 which is minus 3 how do you find x3 x3 is when this is 3 or this is 2 so you get x2 minus 2 plus 1 x2 is already found to be minus 3 minus 3 minus 3 minus 6 what is x4 similarly x3 minus 3 plus 1 you will get minus 6 minus 4 minus 10 now at this point you might recognize the pattern here these are all negatives of triangular numbers it is minus 1 this is minus 1 plus 2 this is minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 minus of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so it's reasonable to say that x hundred is minus of 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up till 100 so that's the pattern this is a recursive definition for the negative of a triangular number okay the initiator has also to be added to it this is a recursive way of defining basically xm is minus of m into m plus 1 by 2 some of the first m natural numbers would be this thing right here but you want the negative of it so they have instead of giving you an explicit definition they have given you a indirect um, recursive definition of the same thing so then x hundred is simply minus of hundred into hundred and one by two which is minus fifty fifty first option let n x and y be positive integers this n is x plus y x is 2 to 10 exclusive y is 14 to 23 exclusive uh, n should be greater than 25 how many distinct values are possible for n um, there's nothing much to this it's a very basic question that tests your logic um, hard to tag this to anything other than let's say in equations so Um, X is basically between 3 and 9 Y is between uh, 14 and wait 15 and 22 so then X plus Y should lie between 18 three the lowest values are added together and the highest values are added together so then it should be between 18 and 31 any value of 18 uh, any integer value between 18 and 31 should be possible for x plus y but they want n to be greater than 25 another way of saying this would be n is greater than or equal to 26 so even though uh, this gives me sums between 18 and 31 they are not all allowed you have to then restrict it to 26 to 31 based on this condition 
18 to 25 rejected how many values are there um, it's 31 minus 26 plus 1 so that's going to be 6 log 30 to the base a is capital a log 5 by 3 to the base a is minus b and log a to the base 2 is 1 by 3 find log a to the base 3 four options are given um what does what all um concepts do we need in this question we need pretty much all of the logarithmic identities the one for multiplication division which is essentially the same exponentiation the base change um, one implication of the base change uh, identity is that this can be rewritten as log of 2 to the base a is 3 this can be rewritten as using the exponent identity log of 3 by 5 to the base a is plus b and then this thing that they want us to evaluate is the reciprocal of log of 3 to the base a again due to the base change identity so you already seen these two in action um, what we need to do is find this first and then take the reciprocal and we'll have the answer you want to get this 3 in terms of 30 and 2 and 3 by 5 so what you'll notice is 30 into 3 by 5 is 90 by 5 18 if you divide it by 2 you will get 9 which is 3 square so log 30 plus log 3 by 5 they're all to the base a I'm not gonna write the base uh, minus log 2 is log 9 this is uh, log 30 is a plus log 3 by 5 is b and uh, log 2 is 3 so a plus b minus 3 is log 9 which is 2 log 3 which means that log 3 is a plus b pl minus 3 by 2 and we already mentioned that log th the reciprocal of log 3 is what we want we want log a to the base 3 log a to the base 3 is the reciprocal of the last expression it's going to be 2 by a plus b minus 3 uh, which is the first option a contractor agreed to construct 6 kilometers in 200 days and he had 140 people assigned to it after 60 days only 1.5 kilometer had been done how many additional people would he employ at this point to finish on schedule now to do this efficiently you have to use direct and inverse proportion properly there are a lot of things that you could calculate here that you don't need to calculate so an efficient approach would look like this you have done 1.5 in 60 days if you are to continue at this rate the remaining 4.5 would require 180 days but you don't have 180 days you want to do it in 140 more days because you already used up 60 of the available 200 days you can't take 180 days you want to do it in 180 days 140 instead that is two times in the ratio 9 is to 7 now for the same amount of work time and speed are inversely proportional so if you want to re uh, reduce the time to 7 by 9 then you have to increase the speed to 9 by 7 of the original speed and speed is basically proportional to the number of people employed so if you had 140 people who are doing 7 speed 
to do nine speed you need 180 people which is an extra 40 people that should be hired 40 is your required answer the area in square units enclosed by the lines x is equal to two, y is equal to mod of x minus 2 plus 4 the x axis and the y axis is equal to um, what all do you need to solve this question basics of coordinate geometry x axis y axis x equal to 2 where are they you need to know what the mod function looks like and you also need to be able to shift it uh, because of the minus 2 and the plus 4 and then once you plot these things you will get a basic diagram uh, whose area you need to find for that you need the basics of mensuration so let's see what that looks like you have your y axis you have your x axis that's your origin um, 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 I think I'm gonna write mark 5 6 as well that should be enough so where is I already have the uh, x axis and the y axis I want x equal to 2 which is parallel to the y axis it will pass through 2 comma 0 and will go vertically that is x equal to 2 and I need mod of x minus 2 plus 4 mod of x will look like this that's y is equal to x that's y is equal to minus x it will be a v shape with a plus 1 slope here minus 1 slope here we know this mod x but we need to shift this 2 units to the right 4 units up so then what does it look like now remove the original this lowest point this lowest point will shift to 2 comma 4 so 2 4 and then v shape that v is going to pass through this point this is what it looks like so this portion is open you can ignore all of that the close figure you want is this trapezium um, we can just split it into uh, a, a rectangle and a right triangle if you want or you can directly use the trapezium formula this point is 2 4 this point is uh, 0 6 the area you need is half into a plus b into h where this is my h and it is equal to 2 so half into 4 plus 6 into 2 that would be um, half and two will cancel 10. Dick is thrice as old as Tom and Harry is twice as old as Dick. If Dick's age is one year less than the average age of all three, then Harry's age in years is how much? What all do we need to solve this question? We need ratio for the thrice and the twice. We need to know the average is sum of terms by number of terms we need um, word problems that can be framed as linear equation okay so we have Tom Dick and Harry uh, always try to frame uh, stuff using minimum number of assumed variables so I'm going to take uh, Tom as x Dick would be 3x and Harry is twice of the 3x is so 6x so the sum is 10x and the number of terms is 3 so it's 10 by 3x is the average and the statement here is Dick's age is one year less than the average Dick's age is 3x it is one year less than the average that's the equation take the sentence take it bit by bit the part before this LHS equal to RHS okay so that gives me uh, multiplying throughout by 3 it would become 9x is 10x minus 3 transposing it becomes x is equal to 3 we want Harry's age Harry's age is 
6 into 3 is 18. How many of the integers from 1 to 120 are divisible by none of 2 and 5 and 7? Not divisible by 2, not divisible by 5, not divisible by 7. This is a combinatorics question at its core. Um, the most important concept, the primary concept that may prevent you from solving this is principle of inclusion and exclusion. Other things are also required, basic divisibility. Um, complement, the idea of a complement that turns up in set theory and PNC, but this is the primary thing I think. How do you do this? They want how many integers not divisible by 2 or 5 or 7. I will find the complement of the answer first. Which means divisible by 2 or divisible by 5 or divisible by 7. D2 union D5 union D7 and then I would uh, use principle of inclusion exclusion to expand this and it become D2 plus D5 plus D7 minus D2 intersection D5 and simply write D2 D5 minus D2 D7 minus D5 D7 plus D2 D5 D7 I think I'll write it below. Now, um, the number of numbers, integers between 1 and 120 which are divisible by 2 is 60, half of them. Every second number is divisible by 2. Every fifth number is divisible by 2, so the count is 120 by 5, 24. 120 by 7 is 17 and the remainder, 17 multiples, the numbers are 7, 14, 21, all the way up till 119, which happens to be 17 into 7. Now, the things to be subtracted, D to D5, the numbers which are in the intersection of the two sets, numbers divisible by 2 and numbers divisible by 5, that intersection is basically numbers divisible by 10. Divisible by 10, there are 12 numbers. Similarly, divisible by 14, uh, 120 by 14 is 8 and a little bit more. Uh, last one is divisible by 5 and 7, which would become divisible by 35. And 35 into 3 is 105, so that's going to be a 3. And then you have to put a plus. Um, 2 into 5 into 7 is 70. Multiples is 70, less than or equal to 120, there is only one of them. And uh, this is going to become how much? 24 plus 17, 41, 101, minus 20, 81, minus 3, 78, plus 1, 79. 79 is not my answer, it is the complement of my answer. My required answer is total minus what I just found, which is going to be 120 minus 79, 41. In the final examination, Vishnu scored 52%, Asha scored 64%. The marks obtained by Vishnu is 23 less and by Asha is 34 more than Ramesh. Uh, the marks obtained by Geeta who scored 84% is how much? Let's talk about the most efficient way of solving this question and then I'll explain how and why. The difference between these two people is 12% of the total score, the maximum score in the exam. And this difference is 23 less and 34 more than a person. So the difference between them is 23 plus 34, 57. And if 12% 12 is 57, then 84% is how much? Notice that this is just into 7. So the answer is 57 into 7, 15 into 7, 350, 7 into 7, 49, 399. That is the answer. So 
um, what I did here in a single step in case you're confused about it let the total be 100 X Vishnu is therefore 52 X uh, Asha is 64 X Vishnu is uh, Ramesh minus 23 Asha is Ramesh plus 34 if you subtract these two equations you'll get 12 X is equal to 57 equation 2 minus equation 1 so I just directly started there didn't even take X you can directly use percent as the variable if you want it works um, and then you'll get multiplying by 7 you'll get 399 if f of x plus y is equal to f of x into f of y and f of 5 is 4 then f of 10 minus f of minus 10 is equal to how much so we have a recursively defined function and we are given an input output pair if you want to solve this rigorously you can just say f of 10 can be written as f of 5 plus 5 so by the definition given to us it is f of 5 into f of 5 so then that's going to be 4 into 4 16 what about f of minus 10 what are we going to do to do this let's look at f of 5 plus 0 that is f of 5 into f of 0 now f of 5 is 4 f of 5 is 4 this means that f of 0 has to be 1 now we can do something f of 0 can be rewritten as f of 10 plus minus 10 according to the definition given it is f of 10 into f of minus 10 f of 0 is 1 it is 16 which we already found out uh, into f of minus 10 this means that f of minus 10 is 1 by 16 so we found f of 10 is 16 f of minus 10 is 1 by 16 the required answer is us uh, f of 10 minus f of minus 10 would be 16 minus 1 by 16 it's 15 point something obviously from the options it is 15 point nine three seven five now the hack here is uh, that we have some patterns for certain recursive definitions and the one for this is find a function that behaves the same way and that function is the exponentiation function a raised to x plus y is equal to a raised to x into a raised to y we know this as an identity for exponents so when a recursive definition matches this identity that we know you can use f of x as a raised to x and use this function uh, it, it may or may not be this function itself doesn't matter this particular example should be able to solve this question so if you do it like that uh, we have a raised to 5 is 4 at which point you can directly say a raised to 10 is 16 a raised to minus 10 should obviously be 1 by 16 and then the answer is 16 minus 1 by 16 this is obviously way faster uh, than not using this hack in solving it rigorously from scratch 2 into 4 into 8 into 16 divided by log 4 to the base 2 squared log 8 to the base 4 cubed log 16 to the base 8 raised to 4 what do we need to simplify this we need um, exponents basics and uh, some log identities now this is uh, I'm gonna say 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 4 using identities I'm gonna rewrite it as 2 raised to 10 denominator log 4 to the base 2 is log 4 by log 2 squared log 
8 by log 4 cubed log 16 by log 8 raised to 4 now log 4 can be written as 2 log 2 log 8 can be rewritten as 3 log 2 and log 4 can be rewritten as 2 log 2 log 16 is 4 log 2 log 8 is 3 log 2 raised to 4 you can cut wait you can cut the log 2 everywhere now you don't have any logs in this you only have some um, numbers to multiply and divide 2 raised to 10 in the numerator the denominator contains 2 square 3 by 2 cubed so that's a 3 cube here and a 2 cube here next you have 4 by 3 raised to 4 that's a 4 raised to 4 here and a 3 raised to 4 here 3 cube and 3 raised to 4 will cut to give you an extra 3 in the numerator um, 2 square and 2 cube will give you an extra 2 in the numerator that is basically 2 raised to 11 there's 10 2's here and an extra 2 here 2 raised to 11 into 3 divided by this 4 raised to 4 can be rewritten as 2 raised to 8 when you divide this you will get 2 raised to 3 left 2 raised to 3 into 3 24 If A, B, C are non-zero and 14 raised to A is equal to 36 raised to B is equal to 84 raised to C, then 6B times 1 by C minus 1 by A is equal to how much? Um, one of the trickier questions in this quant section and it's tricky because there is a pattern recognition element. Something to notice that if you notice it, it's going to be easy going forward. The uh, the subtopics required are straightforward enough. There's nothing too complicated about it. Um, your basic exponent and log identities are sufficient. But the thing that need you need to notice is 84 by 14 is 6 and this 36 is the square of that 6. How can I use this? That is the thing. Um, so what I can do here is 14 raised to A is equal to 84 raised to C 36 raised to B is also equal to 84 raised to C Equation 1, Equation 2 If you multiply these two equations you will get 14 raised to A into 36 raised to B is equal to 84 raised to 2C this 84 raised to 2c can be rewritten as 14 raised to 2c into 6 raised to 2c which can then be rewritten as 14 raised to 2c into 36 raised to c and when you do the comparison you will notice that a is equal to 2c and that b is equal to c So you can simply take c is equal to 1, b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 2 and substitute it and you will get the answer. So the answer is 6 into 1 into 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2. That's 6 into half and the final answer is 3. Let m and n be natural numbers such that n is even and the three expressions m by 20, n by m and n by 11 are all greater than 0.2 and less than 0.5. Then m minus 2n equals what? Is it 4, 2, 1 or 3? Uh, the options indicate that you have a unique value for this expression. Uh, at least for the expression if not for m and n individually. What all do we need to solve this? We need linear inequations and we need system of inequations so what you want to do is you want to write these three inequations separately um, 
0.2 less than m by 20 less than 0.5 is 1 um, 0.2 less than n by 11 less than 0.5 is the third and the second one is 0.2 less than n by m less than 0.5 you want to deal with this last because it has two variables let's look at the other two first this is basically cross multiplying the 20 you will get uh, 4 less than m less than 10 so that means m is either 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 just leave that there look at the next one uh, 0.2 into 11 is 2.2 2.2 less than n less than 5.5 .5. but n is even so the only even integer between 2.2 and 5.5 .5 is n is equal to 4 we got a unique value for n and that is 4 so now I could rewrite this as 0.2 less than 4 by m less than 0.5 and cross multiplying the m which I know to be even so I don't have to worry about whether I need to flip the sign or not I don't have to flip it uh, 0.2 m less than 4 less than 0.5 m if you want you can multiply uh, by 10 throughout and get 2 m less than 40 less than 5 m now you already have a set of possible values for m you will see that 5m greater than 40 is only true for a 9. 9 is the only value of m uh, for which 5m greater than 40 is true. The others are discarded. So you get m is equal to 9, n is equal to 4. They want us to evaluate m minus 2n. 9 minus twice 4 is 1. Anil, Sunil and Ravi run along a circular path of length 3 kilometers starting from the same point at the same time and going in the same direction. They run at speeds of 15, 10 and 8 respectively. How much distance will Ravi have run when Anil and Sunil meet for the first time at the starting point? So this is a straightforward circular track races question that is the concept that we need we have a distance of 3 and speeds are um, 15, 10 and 8 Anil, Sunil and Ravi we want to find how much distance the third guy has run by the time the first two people meet for the first time at the starting point and for this we have to find the lap times of the first two people that would be Distance by speed 3 by 15 is 0.2 hours. For the second guy, it is 3 by 10, 0.3 hours. So this means at 0.2 hours, he has reached back at the starting point for the first time. And at every multiple of 0.2 hours, he is going to be at the starting point again. So at 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and so on. As far as the second guy Sunil is concerned, he finishes his first lap at 0.3 hours and then the second lap at 0.6 hours, third lap 0.9 hours and so on. So at every multiple of 0.3 hours, he is at the starting point. When are they both at the starting point simultaneously? That would be uh, any common multiple of 0.2 and 0.3. And the first time that that happens is going to be the least common multiple of 0.2 and 0.3 which as you can see here is going to be 0.6 so the question is uh, basically what distance will Ravi run uh, in those 0.6 hours so that is simply uh, speed into time speed is given as 8 and the time has been found to be 0.6 you multiply it you'll get 4.8 kilometers A man buys 35 kgs of sugar and sets a mark price in order to make a 20% profit. He sells 5 kg at this price and 15 kg at a 10% discount. Accidentally, 3 kg of sugar is wasted. 
He sells the remaining sugar by raising the mark price by P percent so as to make an overall profit of 15 percent. Then P is nearest to which of these numbers? Now what are the um, concepts we need? We need uh, weighted average because this ratio 5, 15, 3 and whatever that remaining sugar would be 12. That weight ratio is important here. So it's a weighted average. We need the basics of profit loss. Um, we could use assumed mean to reduce the burden of calculation but it is optional. Now, the simplest way of doing this, oh, uh, one other thing that you could use is invariance. The CP of sugar uh, does not affect the answer here so you can take it as 100 that would be an easy way of doing it. Um, again not necessary but you could do it. But I'm going to do it that way. Let's CP is equal to 100. So I want the average weighted average of the SP per kg to be 115. This is my target. And this weighted average is basically sigma fx by sigma f. So then um, the initial markup was 20 percent. So 120 is the cost for the first 5 kgs. Uh, the selling price for the first 5 kgs. 5 into 120 plus next 15 kg is at a 10 percent discount on the 120 which will take you down to 108 plus 3 kg is wasted so here it's the same as selling it for 0 rupees plus the last 12 kg is being sold at some price I'm going to take it as x4 for the time being this much divided by sigma f uh, which is 35 kg should become 115 I'm going to take the 35 to the other side. This will give you, uh, I believe, 3500 plus 525, 4025. Start subtracting the other stuff. You will have 12x4 is 3425, 1925, 1805 is what you will get x4 is 1800 by 12 is 150 a little over 150 now the question is um, for the last category you had marked it up from 100 to 120 how much should you further mark it up uh, so that the overall profit percent is 15 percent we know that the final price is 150 after the second markup. What was the percentage increase from 120 to 150 is the question and that the answer to that will be 25 percent. Let k be a constant the equations kx plus y is equal to 3 and 4x plus ky is equal to 4 have a unique solution if and only if which of these conditions. So the topic here is number of solutions to a pair of linear equations in two variables and the concept as we know it is if the equations are a1x plus b1y plus c1 equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0. Um, three conditions exist you can either have zero solutions or infinite solutions or a unique solution. The unique solution happens when a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2. So here our equations are kx plus y is equal to 3 and 4x plus ky is equal to 4. This is 1y and we want k by 4 to be not equal to 1 by k. This gives you k square not equal to 4 which gives you k not equal to plus or minus 2 which you could rephrase as mod of k 
not equal to 2 which would be the third option How many integers in the set 100, 101, 102 all the way up till 999 have at least one digit repeated? Uh, question from PNC. Uh, first thing you could replace this with three digit numbers. Three digit natural numbers. How many three digit natural numbers have at least one digit repeated now um, this should be a familiar question type to anybody who has done at least one full exercise uh, from a, from the PNC chapter of any textbook it's a very common question uh, you need basic fundamental theory of counting you need the concept of complement uh, usually any question from combinatorics that has the phrase at least one is done using complements. So the idea there would be uh, the required answer is the total number of three digit numbers minus the three digit numbers that do not have at least one digit repeated or three digit numbers that contain three distinct digits. So this total is basically 999 minus 100 plus 1. So if you're counting both endpoints, you have to do plus 1 after subtracting. So that would be 900. The complement is three digit numbers that have three distinct digits, which can be found by simply doing um, fundamental theory of counting. The first dash should contain any digit other than 0. There are 10 digits available, it cannot be 0, it could be any of the other 9. So that can be filled, this dash can be filled in 9 ways. So some digit is gone, I don't know which one, some non-zero digit is gone. How many digits remain? There are 9 digits remaining including 0 and any dash after the first dash can contain the 0. So now 0 is not uh, rejected anymore, you have 9 choices. So the second dash can be filled in nine ways and then some other digit is gone. I don't know which one. So some digit is gone and now there are eight digits left and any of the eight could be used. So the number of ways of uh, creating a three digit number with three distinct digits would be nine into nine into eight. Again, this should be familiar to people who have done this. It's always going to be nine here because zero is not allowed and then the same digit is repeat the same multiplier is repeated once more and then it goes down as is usual for FTC. So this is the answer 900 minus 9 into 9 to 8 which becomes 900 minus 648 which leaves you with 252. A batsman played n plus 2 innings and got out on all occasions his average Score in these n plus 2 innings was 29. Scored 30 and 15 in the last two innings. Scored less than 38 in each of the first n innings. In these n innings, his average was 30 and lowest was x. What is the smallest possible value of x? So basically, he had an average of 30 runs in n innings. So n observations with an average of 30. If a 38 and 15 are added to these n observations, the new average becomes 29. The average drops by 1. Uh, the efficient way of doing this would be to use delta s is equal to delta a into n. Sum is average into number of terms. Change in sum is change in average into number of terms. This is just a, a, a modified version of x bar is equal to a plus sigma f d by sigma f which is how you find the uh, mean using an assumed mean just a small adjustment of that same concept so then um, my starting average for n observations is 30 when a 38 and a 15 are added to that set of observations Notice that 38 plus 15 is 53. Two observations are added. If those two observations had added up to 60, 
two observations had added up to 60, the average would have been maintained. The average used to be 30. If you had two numbers that add up to 60, the average wouldn't rise or fall. It would have been maintained. We actually have seven less than that. So this would result in a deficit which would be distributed across all n plus two innings creating a drop in average. So the deficit here is seven. The delta is I would take is minus seven. Uh, this creates a change in average which is 30 going down to 29. So the change in average is minus one. Into n number of terms is always the final value of the number of observations. Solving this you will get n plus two is equal to seven, n is equal to five. So if you're familiar with the concept, if you're uh, thorough with the concept, you will just look at this and say 38 plus 15, 53 is seven less. The, uh, the delta S is minus seven. The change in average is minus one. The final value of the number of terms is n plus two. And then solving it, you'll get n is equal to five. Now, then you use this part of the question where he says the uh, in in those n innings, the score is always less than 38. What could have been the lowest score among the initial n observations? For the second part, you could use uh, basic addition. You could simply say 5 into 30 is 150. So in the first five innings, we found that it was 5 and the average is 30. His sum was 150 what is the lowest value among the five? You maximize the other four and put 37 because the question says less than 38. And you'll see that these four add up to 148. So the last one would be two to sum up to 150 and two would be the answer. Alternately, you can do deviations there as well. You could say less than 38 means maximum 37. That's a plus uh, seven deviation for four of the five observations. It has to be neutralized by a minus 28 deviation for the fifth observation. Minus 28 deviation corresponds to a score of two. Uh, this is not necessary. I'm just saying this can also be done. This should be simple enough. The same is true for the first part as well, where if you want, you can simply do sigma fx by sigma f. Um, you could say that the initial sum was 30 n and then you added a 38 and a 15. That's the new total divided by n plus 2 and that will give you 29. You can simplify this. It will become a linear equation in one variable and you can solve it and get n is equal to 5. But this is faster. Two alcohol solutions A and B are mixed in the proportion 1 is to 3 by volume. The volume of the mixture is then doubled by adding solution A such that the resulting mixture is 72% alcohol. A is 60%. What is the percentage in B? Oh, what do you need for this? You need some basics of ratios and you need um, weighted average using number line. So I want you to notice what they've done here. You have A and B. Initially, you take one part of A and three parts of B. So the mixture is four parts. After that, the volume of this mixture is doubled to eight parts by adding four parts of A. So you end up with five parts of A and three parts of B be in the total eight parts. So this this one is to three followed by doubling by adding a is just an indirect way of giving you five is to three. You have to cast this five is to three first before you proceed. Now you use the number line. You have 60 and an unknown mixed in the ratio five is to three to give you 72. So you invert that ratio 3 is to 5 and then 72. So the three parts corresponds to a distance of 12. 
using direct proportion you get five parts should correspond to a distance of 20. So the unknown you're looking for is 20 more than 72 so it has to be 92. The vertices of a triangle are 0, 0, 4, 0 and 3, 9. The area of the circle passing through these three points is how much? What are the concepts that we need? We need circumcircle, which is the one that passes through the vertices. Specifically, we need um, how do we locate the coordinates of the circumcenter uh, given the coordinates of the vertices and then we need uh, we can once we have that coordinate we can find the radius using the distance formula in coordinate geometry and then the formula pi r square will give you the area of the circle so we have 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 0, and 3, 9 as the vertices. Um, as far as finding the circumcenter from the coordinates of the vertices go, this is a somewhat easy example uh, because of the uh, the origin as well as the fact that one of these sides is horizontal that makes our job somewhat easy the concept is that the circumcenter is equidistant from uh, the vertices so if you have a circle that goes through all these points oh my god that won't work what does it look like yeah, something like that. Rough diagram. If you have a, a, a center, again, please remember that this is a rough diagram. All of these are radii and they have to be equal. So you can equate the, uh, the these three distances. Two at a time will give you um, two equations third one will be redundant and you can solve those equations to get uh, the coordinates of the center but you can optimize this a bit uh, if you remember that these equations correspond to the perpendicular bisectors of the sides so when uh, let's let's name these vertices let's call them ABC and uh, the circumcenter will call O. So A, B, C and O. Now uh, if I write AO is equal to BO and convert that into an equation, I am basically getting the um, equation for the perpendicular bisector of AB. So instead of writing it, you can simply say that this point what you will get is that this is x is equal to 2 and then this point is 2 comma y you can you can skip a couple of steps and directly say AO equal to BO is essentially gonna give me that O is 2 comma y if you don't believe me you can do the step right AO square is equal to BO square which is the same thing um, start by assuming O is x comma y and solve it and you'll end up with x equal to 2 and you will get that the point is 2 comma y. So I'm going to skip that step. Next I'm going to do AO is equal to CO. And then we're going to write AO square is equal to CO square because we can just get rid of the root that way. The root that comes from the distance formula. Um, AO square is simply y square plus 4. And remember that this is the radius squared that will turn up. AO square is y square plus 4 and that's equal to CO square. Remember that C was uh, 3, 9. 
So that's going to be um, y minus 9 square plus 1. which is y square minus 18y plus 81 plus 1 is 82. You will see that the y squares will cancel. Take the 18 to the other side. 18y is equal to 78. Take out a 6. 3y is equal to 13. y is equal to 13 by 3. And I want um, pi r square as my answer. What's R? Okay, we don't have to find R. We only need to find pi R square. What's R square? R square is Y square plus 4. So what I want is 13 by 3 squared plus 4 into pi. Uh, that would be pi times 169 by 9 plus 4 you will see that this is pi into 205 by 9 which is the third option a person invested a certain amount of money at 10 percent annual interest compounded half yearly after one and a half years, the the amount is 18,522. Uh, what was the principal? The concept here is we have to use compound interest, but it has a non-annual period of compounding. So then it's 10% annual interest, but compounded half yearly. So in a period of compounding, your interest is 5%. It's 10% in a year, but it is half a year. So 5% in a period of compounding and how many such periods do you have you have one and a half years half plus half plus half one and a half years so three periods of compounding so then your formula will basically become amount is p into one plus five percent three times because three complete periods of compounding you substitute 8, 18, 522 here. The unknown principle is what we have to find. This is 1.05 the whole cube. P is 18,522 by 1.05 cubed. You will get this as 16,000. A and B are two railway stations 90 kilometers apart. A train leaves A at 9, heading towards B at 40 km per hour. Uh, the second train leaves B at 10.30, heading towards A at 20 km per hour. The trains meet each other at what time? This is a very basic um, relative speed based question. Um, the solution is pretty simple. The total distance is sigma st. This is certain time t1 for which the speed is the relative speed is s1. Um, that's one phase of the journey, and then the second phase you have a certain other duration t2, where the speed the relative speed is t2. That's all there is. 90 total distance is. Um, during the first phase, that is from 9 to 10.30, one and a half hours. The relative speed is, is simply 40 because only one train is moving. And then in the second phase, um, they, they are both moving 40 and 20 in opposite directions. So the relative speed is 60 and there is a certain amount of time which we have to find. So 40 in one and a half is 60, take it to the other side, you get 60 T2 is 30, which means T2 is half an hour. So the time at which they meet is half an hour after 10.30. So it's 11. Vimala starts her office every day at 
my name this won't be required at any point and reaches exactly on time she drives at her usual speed of 40 one day she drove with 35 instead and she was six minutes late so we're talking about the same distance so speed and time are inversely proportional the speeds are given as 40 and 35 which are in the ratio 8 is to 7 so the times are going to be in the ratio 7 is to 8 you can take them as 17 80 what they've given us is 80 is 6 minutes late compared to the 70 um, this would give you t is equal to 6 um, that would give you normal time 42 minutes that day when she was late she took 48 minutes that is the first part of the question second part one day she covers two-thirds of a distance to office in one-third of her usual time so there is a total distance to cover that distance let's call it D it's S into T so 40 km per hour into 42 minutes but convert that to hours this is the distance um, this would be two-thirds of 42 28 kilometers She covers two thirds of the twenty eight in one third of her usual time to reach office. Usual time to reach office is forty two minutes, so she covers it in fourteen minutes and then she stops for eight minutes. The speed at which she should drive the remaining distance to reach office exactly on time. So the remaining one third of 28 still needs to be covered. Total time should be 42 minutes. Reach exactly on time. You already used 20 minutes. You need, you already used 22. You need another 20 more. So the required speed is distance by time. The distance is 1 by 3 into 28 kilometers. The time is 20 minutes which I'll rewrite as um, 20 by 60 hours you'll see that the 1 by 3 and the 20 by 60 will cancel giving you 28 kilometers per hour let m and n be positive integers if x square plus mx plus 2n is 0 and x square plus 2nx plus m is equal to 0 both have real roots then the smallest possible value of m plus n is how much? Um, what all do we know, uh, need for this question? Obviously, because real roots are mentioned, we need um, nature of roots of a quadratic equation, which is based on the discriminant b square minus 4ac. We will also need to do um, use inequations. Let's see. So x square plus mx plus 2n is equal to 0. Its discriminant is going to be m square minus 4 into 1 into 2n. That's going to be m square minus 8n. And it needs to be non-negative for the roots to be real. That's one. The other one, um, the discriminant is going to be 2n the whole square, 4n square minus 4 into 1 into m so that's going to be 4 n square minus 4 m also greater than or equal to 0 this will simplify to n square minus m greater than or equal to 0 m is less than or equal to n square now i'm going to throw that here and you will get n square the whole square n raised to 4 minus 8 n greater than or equal to 0 which can be rewritten as n raised to 4 greater than or equal to 8 n now it's given that m and n are positive integers so if you know the sign of the variable you can actually take it out and decide whether or not to flip the sign here because it's positive we don't have to flip the sign we have n cube greater than or equal to 8 which will give you n greater than or equal to 2 so n has to be at least 2 for this to happen now if you go and throw this back into 
an equation that contains both n and m, you will get m square minus 16 greater than or equal to 0, m square greater than or equal to 16, m greater than or equal to 4. Uh, this is after choosing the minimum value n is equal to 2 minimum corresponding to which I can take m is equal to 4 that's the minimum value putting them together you get m plus n is equal to 4 plus 2 6 in a trapezium ABCD AB is parallel to DC BC is perpendicular to DC and angle BAD is 45. If DC is 5, BC is 4, find the area of the trapezium. Let's just construct this and see what happens. We have an ABCD, BAD is 45. So I'm going to draw my BA here and draw 45. That's my BAD. And then I'm going to have. my BC perpendicular to DC BC perpendicular to DC that's what I have now you'll notice that this doesn't require um, anything beyond the very basics of mensuration and maybe um, what to do with this 45 so what we normally do with the trapezium is we break it down into a rectangle and two triangles if it looks like this but because since since we already have a 90 there it just breaks down into a rectangle and a triangle we already have BC perpendicular DC we also drop a perpendicular from D onto AB let's call this point E it's given to us that DC is 5 and BC is 4 and EBCD um, based on the construction ED is a rectangle so we'll have a 4 here and we'll have a 5 here as well now notice that BAD is given as 45 you have a 45 you have a 90 by angles and property you'll have a 45 here as well now we have an isosceles right triangle which means AE is also going to be 4 that's all you need the rectangle is 4 into 5 20 the isosceles right triangle is half into 4 into 4 which is going to become 8 those are the areas. You add them up, you get 28 square centimeter. The points 2, 1 and minus 3, minus 4 are opposite vertices of a parallelogram, which means they lie on a diagonal. If the other two vertices lie on the line x plus 9y plus c is equal to 0, then c is how much? Again, the other two vertices also lie on a diagonal. What are the concepts at play here? Um, from Euclidean geometry, we have properties of parallelogram. The one that I'm looking at is diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. What else do we need? We need the midpoint formula from coordinate geometry. So you have some parallelogram you have two points uh, this is not drawn to uh, the convention of uh, the x y axis being horizontal and perpendicular I'm not thinking about that maybe it will look like it maybe it won't here is a point though um, these two points represent the endpoints of a diagonal the other two vertices are on a line that's given to us x plus 9y plus c is equal to 0 but notice that that is just the other diagonal and the concept we want is that the midpoint between these two points given to us should lie on the equation I mean should lie on the line that's given to us so it should satisfy the equation so first find this midpoint it's going to be 2 minus 3 by 2 minus 0 0.5 1 minus 4 by 2 minus 1.5 so the midpoint we're looking for it's the meeting point of the two diagonals of the parallelogram is minus half minus one and a half 
that should satisfy the equation minus half plus 9 into minus 1 and a half plus c is equal to 0 this gives you minus uh, 0 0.5 minus 13.5 plus c is equal to 0 c is equal to 14 How many pairs a comma b of positive integers are there? So is that a is less than or equal to b and a b is 4 raised to 2017. This is a question from factors, couple of concepts coming together. First thing obviously you have to prime factorize what is given to you. So it's a into b is 2 raised to um, 4034, which is a product that is um, which is a number that is 4035 factors. Odd number of factors. So if you want to put them into factor pairs, um, let me take an example first. If you have something like 12, 12 is 6 factors. They are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. The 6 factors sit in 3 factor pairs. The two numbers in a pair, their product is going to be the original number itself. Um, so six factors, three factor pairs. But what happens when you take a square number, let's say um, 16. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. You have five factors. We know that perfect squares have odd number of factors. You end up having 1 into 16, 2 into 8, 4 into 4. There are three ways instead of exactly 5 by 2. That, that's not even an integer. Three ways of writing 16 as a product of two numbers. When you have five numbers, when you have an odd number, divide it by 2 and then round it up to the next integer. Three ways of writing factor pairs. With non-squares, you have an even number of factors exactly half now so factor pairs is also coming in they ask for order pairs but then that is immediately undone by a less than or equal to b so um, 4 to 3 5 factors you will have 2017 pairs and an extra number sitting by itself giving you 2018 ways of writing this as a product of two numbers that's precisely the answer if you want to go in a little more detail it's 2 raised to 0 into 2 raised to 40 34 2 raised to 1 into 2 raised to 40 33 2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 40 32 all the way to 2 raised to 2017 into 2 raised to 2017 this is fine because it says a less than or equal to this is not fine because now a is greater than b this is not fine so this is what we want count zero all the way up to 2017 that's going to be 2018 solutions